Today I'm going to cover taking pictures on smartphones and tablets. And we're going to cover beyond the click and shoot things we're normally used to seeing, uh, such as like a lot of us when we take pictures, you hold the camera and you put it on photo or video, you press and you want to see what you're going to get. Uh, and then you go ahead and press the stop uh, the video, for instance. Well, we're going to go beyond that. We're going to talk about accessing photos, first of all. And how do you access photos? If you look up on the right side here, of this camera, this is an iPhone, you take photos by using the camera, and that's this icon. If you want to go ahead and look at your photos after they're taken, it is, you can do it through the camera, or you can do it through this, which is your photos. This has much more options, and you can do a lot more things with it. On an Android phone, same thing. You're going to take pictures, you're generally going to use your camera. However, if you want to look at pictures, you can look at gallery, which is very similar to the photos option on the iPhone, or a lot of people store uh, I, uh, photos using uh, Google Photos, and they do that both on the iPhone and the Android, because it has a very good editor involved in it. It also has a lot of different ways you can store and look at your photos. And in the beginning, especially, this was a much more powerful, powerful way of reviewing photos with a lot of options. However, however you wanted to now, using Android Photos, Android Gallery, or iPhone Photos, you're going to be just fine, and you can view them any way you want. Next thing we'll cover is uh, the actual positioning of the cameras. And then we'll talk about camera modes. This is beyond the standard point and shoot. The different things you can get, the different ways you can say pictures with enhancements and getting exactly what you want on a photo. It looks much more professional when you're done. Then we'll talk about managing photos. It's going to be storing them, sharing them with other people. How do you do that? And also ways of keeping uh, your photos uh, in albums and uh, storing them in that method. First of all, positioning the camera. Most of us, when we take pictures, we position them as this is, the camera is on the right. We hold it vertical, we take a picture, and that's fine for many things, especially selfies, or if you're taking uh, pictures that you're just going to basically share through cameras. However, this is sometimes a much more better way to take pictures in the horizontal view, and I'll show you in just a second here. It'll give you much better definition, much better uh, presentation if you're going to show it at all on computers or if you're going to share it through casting to a television. The one on the left side where it was taken horizontal and if you take a look at on the television you're going to get this full view and it covers the full television screen in most cases. However you take the vertical held, held handheld camera and you take a picture from that and you show it on a television, you're generally going to get these white spaces on the side, not really what you desire to do. And this is the view you're going to have looking at it a lot of times from a computer and or a television. So decide what you're going to do with these pictures in the future. Most of us want to share them with people that they're going to view on your compu their computers, not just their smartphone devices. So you may want to consider horizontal over the vertical position as time goes on. Let's talk about smartphone modes. Modes are camera settings that allow for enhanced photography. You can do a lot more than just the standard picture taken. Not all phones have the same modes. Uh, for instance, uh, iPhones will generally, and iPads will have very similar modes depending on the version a phone and iPad that you have. Androids can be all over the map because there's over 300 manufacturers. Some include much more modes than any other device. Others can include much less modes. But you have to understand that smartphones compete for the top stage of selling their product. What they've enhanced mostly over the last few years are, are the cameras. Most phones will have what I'm going to cover today, however. Many modes can be downloaded from the Play Store. So if you have a mode that you want to use, you don't have it on your camera, look at the Play Store, and there's a good chance you may be able to download it 
I mean Play Store, iPhone or Android. So let's look at finding the camera modes on your smartphone. First of all, you're going to generally look at the camera right here, and that's how you're going to take your pictures. And what you're going to do when you open up the camera, you're going to look at the bottom of the phone here. On most phones, it'll show there. Some may show on the side, some may show on top. This actually does a little bit on both. But you see where you have the option of photo. Uh, also being able to take a single take or videos or more. And if you press more or you slide this bar over on other cameras, you'll get something like this where you can do monochrome videos, high uh, definition resolution, panorama views, night shots, and many, many more modes. Or it may be such as things up here where you can turn your flash on and off and do other modes that way. Some will just have an area camera may have a thing down here that says modes and nothing else. And again, you're going to open up a screen similar to the one on the right. First mode I'm going to cover is portrait mode. Standard mode, this is a standard picture. Everything comes in nice and clear. And it's nice. But if you really want to enhance the photo part, you take it in portrait mode and the people are more in there enhanced and clear. And the backgrounds come in a little fuzzy and that's intentional to give it more of a portrait. Next thing is selective focus mode. Select the object in a, that you want to focus on. It will usually draw a box, or you can draw a box, or you can move it, and it'll make that clear, and then the rest of it will be more of a dull or uh, not as clear of a background, such as in that picture. Next mode is Panavision. A normal photo that you take will show this uh, scenery on the left. However, if you look at this photo on the right, the scenery that was taken on the left photo is shown in this box that's a red outline. However, you do a panoramic view, which you'll hold your camera in one position and then scan it across horizontally to the end of what you want to capture, then it will give you the view of this whole picture on the right. So that's Panavision. Next, you have surround mode. This is where you pan the camera to wherever you want to include what you want in the photo. If you take a normal picture, it will just show everything that is in the viewfinder. But if you start moving the camera around and you want that in the picture too, you can choose the objects that you want and then it will make a view similar to what you have here. Although there is what appears to be distortion in the view, that, the reason for that is so it could include everything that you wanted to show in that picture. Dual mode. Uh, the picture on the right is the person taking the picture, and that's if the camera was facing towards him. The one on the left is what he's pointing towards if we're using the camera on the back. So what this does is show both the front and rear cameras at the same time, and this is dual mode. Now there's another term for dual mode where you where you're using multiple cameras. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about strictly having the front view and rear view at the same time in a camera, and a lot of these you can even resize. Square mode. This is great for Instagram. Uh, gives you the best settings of the pictures they want, and also many social medias will only give you more of a square image. And so this is one you want when you want to consider taking the picture using square mode. Next is food. If you look at the picture on the right, the food mode is off. And that's just a straight normal picture. If you look at on the left, it looks a little more tasty. And that's with food mode on. It enhances the things that you would want to see to make it appealing more than just a steady picture. Uh, the blueberries on the left is a good example of food mode on, where it enhances the food in the cup. The rest of it is kind of showed more in a dull mode. Night mode. A lot of us will take a picture at night. We'll point the camera, and we get what we have on the left and say, well, it looks pretty good. I think I'll do that. But if you set it to night mode, the picture on the right is what you're going to get. It's going to keep the shutter open longer. It's going to give you a much better 
picture and much more lighting uh, within a camera. Next mode is burst mode. This is a first bath, a fast burst of pictures. For instance, if a person is swinging the bat, it may take five. And some of these you can say how many pictures you take in one second. And so you'll be able to track the motion you want. Maybe you'll just want the second slide for your picture to send to somebody and you won't use the others. So fast burst mode is good for action where you don't know exactly when it's going to start or where it's going to end. But yet, like a person swinging the bat, as he starts the swing, you hit the shutter and you'll get the full swing in different photos. Usually they use a very fast uh, shutter lens, around a thousandth of a second. And what you'll get, but because of that, is more pictures and a very fast view and a lot less blurriness. But again, you do have, an, you have to have enough light available. Next thing we'll look at slow and fast motion videos. Decide by how many features are recorded or shown per second. Uh, for instance, the more frames per second that you film, it's going to give you a slower mode. If you do less frames, it'll give you a faster motion picture. And sometimes you can set these in editors as well. So for an example of slow motion, they put a little powder on the market. So you can really hold. There's a drop coming through and the weak putter is coming through. You can see what a dramatic effect this would have. For fast motion, it takes a time lapse or it enhances the speed of things. And a lot of times you can set this time lapse from seconds to even hours on the cameras for fast motion. Other type of uh, fast motion you get is actual time lapse mode video. And this is where you'll set how many pictures you want taken over what period of time. Uh, for instance, if you want to get the uh, sense of clouds going over like this video will show us, uh, what you do is you might take one picture every three minutes or even every five minutes or just have it in fast mode where it just speeds things up. But this is what they will look like. And here again, it gives you a nice dramatic effect of a very fast motion of the clouds. And this can be over a period of hours even. Next, you have time lapse mode photo. If you notice, everything on the left is clear and everything else is clear in the picture except for these light streaks. And what this does is just hold the lens open for a period of time, sometimes five seconds. For instance, if a train is coming through, like you see the red streak and the yellow streak, that's what caused this effect. Uh, the only thing in motion was the train and the shutter was probably open for as long as 10 seconds. So in turn, it winds up giving you a nice uh, visual effect. Uh, that is very useful in time-lapse photo. The nice part is you don't have to be a photographer to know how to set your f-stops or uh, know what ISO settings. They'll do all that automatically for you by just using a time-lapse mode. Then you also have uh, director's mode. And director's mode is where you're looking through the lens uh, or you're looking through the picture on your camera and it shows you the other modes that are optional. For instance, telephoto, wide angle, may have ultra wide view, it might have time lapse, use all sorts of these, and you can choose which one you want to use. This doesn't come standard on most cameras, but it is available and it is a nice feature. Pro mode. Pro mode is simply a person that likes to take care of their own photos and decide what shutter speed is, decide what ISO settings are, decide what the aperture settings are, and also the time of everything else. It will also set a lot of things such as like focusing or panorama or night, but they can do this all manually and by setting it. But if you're not a photographer, you're generally not going to want to mess around with pro mode. Next, I'll talk about augmented reality. 
it allows a preview of things you want to change. For instance, on the left, say this is your current house, but you want to paint the walls. So you can go to Sherwin and Williams and they have augmented reality where you take a picture of your walls and what you do is you just outline the law that you the wall that you want to paint. And this will give you a nice uh, view of what it's going to look like. For instance, on the right here, we just have the blue wall and we left this wall all white. But if we want to make it all blue and make it a different color, we can do the other wall as well. And you'll get a good view of what's, what it's going to be like. Next thing is auto editing photos. I want to talk about this some. And what you can do is if you want to edit a picture to make it look nicer, this is something most of us should be doing and don't. And you can do it with just a very few clicks, not knowing how to do editing. It doesn't require any real knowledge. It just requires a few clicks that you need to be aware of. So let's get started. The very first thing you do is select the picture that you want to auto edit. So for this one, I'll use the two ducks on the right. So I'll check that. And this is what's going to come up most time on most cameras when you're showing that picture. You will have the option to edit it, but you want to go to the edit mode here. Don't let this scare you. You just press the edit mode. What that's going to do, it'll bring it up to where you can wind up changing the things on the pictures. Almost all edit modes have what you call auto editing or auto. And what this will do is simply sharpen the picture for you and give you a much better appearing picture from what you thought was pretty good to start with. And you don't have to do all of look at all these others, decide what they are or make you changes such as like in colors and uh, stuff like that. Uh, darkness and lightness and all that. If you use just this one auto click, it'll get you what you want. Here's the normal picture on the left. And then on the right is the auto corrected picture. So you can see it is much more appealing to look at and you do get a lot better view. Almost all cameras have auto editing. And what about saving photos? On Apple phones and tablets, what you would do you have to make sure that you are saving these automatically. There's a couple ways you can do it. You would click the settings feature, and then you would click your name. It's usually in the upper right hand corner there uh, that shows your phone and the things about you. You click on that, and that will open up the screen here where it says iCloud, find my camera, family sharing, all sorts of things. So what you're going to do is click on iCloud. What does this do? It automatically will save photos for you without you having to do it. But in order to do so, you have to make sure that photos is turned on and your iCloud drive is turned on and iCloud backup is turned on. You want all three of these in case you ever crash your phone, you can go to backup and restore it. However, you can also go to the cloud to open up your iCloud and you'll be able to retrieve it from there as well. Because if you don't do this or have this capability, what it means is if your phone dies, gets stolen, uh, or crashes, uh, gets destroyed, uh, you won't have any way of being able to pull up the photos you have on your phone. So make sure you have them backed up. Now, on the Android side, very similar. What you're going to use is Google Photos. And if you don't have it shown on your screen, you can go to your Gmail account. You have to have a Gmail account. You open up these nine dots here, and it'll give you many different options of programs. One of those programs is going to be a Google Photos. So you're going to click on that, and that will open it up. And also what you want, might want to do is drag it so it shows on your phone all the time, or set it to where it shows. When you get that, then you go to Settings, from your photos once you open it up. Click on settings and make sure it has one of these two checked, original quality or storage saver. If you store it in original quality, it's going to take much more space. If you store it in saver, it will compress the file and reduce the amount of space you need for storing.
looking up sharing and deleting photos. I do want to mention also that Google Photos, again, can be used on iPhones as well, just by downloading the Google Photo app from your Play Store. And but make sure you have a Gmail account that is required. OK, so looking up and sharing and deleting photos with others. So you're going to go to Google Photos and you'll click on that. And then what you're going to do is pick the select button. And this allows you instead of opening one photo, you can or work with one photo, you can work with many. So you click the select button and you select the photos that you want to be able to do. And it'll give you a blue check mark. And this is on all phones. It'll do that. And if you want to get rid of them, you just hit the delete button below. However, if you want to share them, you're generally on most phones going to see this little box with the arrow up. You click on the arrow up and that will open up a way to share. So what you're going to do is put the person's email name in here and you can put as many as you want. And then when you're all done, what you're going to do is it will upload all these photos you have checked. You're going to click on this box here and it will automatically send an email to those people with the photos attached. The only thing I want to comment on here, a lot of emails uh, such as like uh, Gmail uh, and some of the others, a lot of others, have a limit of the size of files you can send across and the amount of photos. If you have trouble, just send instead of trying to send 30 or 40, just sign send may just try and send maybe three or four at a time. Using photo albums. If you have your photos open, again you can do the select thing up top. You'll see Adams and albums on the bottom. If you don't, you can use your search queue. And what you're going to do is search for ad, for albums. Just type the name albums in there, the word albums. Now, what you're going to do, you can start a new album by clicking here, and it will let you start one. But here's the albums you currently have, however many there are. If you do click this, what it's going to do is open up a screen, and you give it a title. And when the screen opens up initially, it's going to say, name your album. So I named this one fun. Okay, then you're going to go to select photos, or select people and pets. And what that's going to do is it allows you to pull in pictures from your camera. And again, you check the ones that you want. And when you check them, you're, this is going to appear in your fun album. And this way you can group your pictures all together. So eventually you may want to delete some. You're able to delete it and get rid of them that way. So there's a lot of use for using albums. And that's all I have. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. And I'll be glad to go ahead and discuss anything with you that I discussed in this program.